What if scenarios? What if Ironhide never died? What if the Transformers movies were better? What if Squeaker was here? Things like this are things that you know we typically wonder about. In fact, Marvel's one step ahead of the game and they made a what if series. Granted half the episodes weren't that good, but there were some that were actually kinda good. So yeah, that's my Marvel what if review. Also I'm very disappointed with the zombies episode. But anyways, speaking of what if scenarios. It's fun making them, but you know what's better? Hearing what the official companies have to say about certain what-if scenarios. Luckily for us, Transformers has a myriad of confirmed what-if scenarios. What if Sentinel fought lockdown? What if the Decepticons won in each movie? We have plenty of what-if scenarios that actually do have a canon answer. In this video, we're going to be talking about one of them. What if Megatron killed the Fallen in Revenge of the Fallen? Is one of those what if scenarios we're taking a look at. This comes straight from the Aspect of Prime little QA. Now, if you don't know what Aspect of Prime, it was basically this like um little event where people could ask Vector Prime questions about certain aspects of the Transformers universe, like, hey, what happened in X timeline? What happened in this universe? What happened after that happened? And he will answer. Some of these answers are not canon. Like, for example, people would say, hey, what happened to Gabatron in G1? But Vector Prime will give you an answer that's not a straight answer, but it's like, in one universe, this happened to Gabatron. In another one, this also happened to him. It's more like, pick which, you know, um, what if you like the most. So, you know, if what if scenarios by the part of Vector Prime is something that interests you, I'm happy to cover them as we go. In this video, we'll be talking about, you know, what if Megatron killed the Fallen. Now, what's interesting is that, that this what if scenario is actually based on the Revenge of the Fallen video game, specifically the PS3 Decepticon campaign. Technically, it could also, you know, follow the Autobot campaign, but I choose to believe this Decepticon campaign because it fits more in line with that campaign. So I'll be telling this intrilling tale and satiate your curiosity. So sit back, relax, as we ponder the question. What if? So our story begins with the game, Revenge of the Fallen. Primarily the Decepticon campaign. Basically the Decepticons kick the Olobots ass way more often than they actually should. And eventually, Megatron betrays the Fallen and kills him, mostly because the Fallen promised him that Megatron will be made a prime if he chooses to follow and serve the Fallen. But when Delilah doesn't grant his wish, Megatron outright betrays the Fallen and kills him. Ultimus Prime also takes that chance to disable the Star Harvester. Megatron is understandably furious at this, but he seizes the opportunity Megatron returns to the Nemesis and activates the Decepticon protoforms inside the ship, commanding his new army and getting ready for his next big takeover of Earth. Megatron considered conquering Earth, but he realized that his true prize was Cybertron. He gathered his army and waged a successful campaign against the Autobots and Nest on Earth. Probably using the tactics that me and Trans Theories came up with, which in just in case if you haven't watched that video, <coughs> go check it out. The plugins never die in the Fire Brothers channel. Feeling forbidden clues that Soundwave left for Sam with Wiki, much like in Dark of the Moon, Optimus Prime took the Sentient to the moon. But at this point, you need to remember that unlike the events of Dark of the Moon in which the Decepticons were mostly hiding and doing hit and run tactics, this time around, the Decepticons had a full blown army and were actively fighting the Autobots and the humans out in the open. The Autobots and Ness were backed into a desperate corner by the Decepticon offensive. So Optimus revives Sentinel in the moon, not on Earth, but in the moon. But Megatron was waiting for that. He waited alongside his Decepticons on the moon, and with Sentinel Prime's aid, the two double teamed against Optimus Prime and defeated and captured him. Oh, and I guess Ratchet dies. Yeah, pretty upsetting. Using his human collaborators, Megatron used the Space Bridge technology to bring Cybertron to Earth's orbit and under the leadership of Dylan. Enslaved humans were put to work strip mining Earth for resources to rebuild Cybertron, much like he was planning the actual film. By this point in the timeline, the Decepticons had taken over control of most of the Earth, with a few small pockets of all about the human resistance every here and there. But the Decepticons were well and truly in charge of the planet by this point. All of this changed, however, when the Fire Nation attacked, <laughs> no, I mean, when Lockdown arrived. The Bounty Hunter demanded that Optimus Prime be given to him so he can deliver him to the creators. Uh, whether that's Quintessa or the actual creators, we don't know yet. This was written before the last night was a thing. But, anyways, it doesn't really matter. Also, I should add, Cybertron was successfully teleported to Earth, so there's that too. 
Megatron and Sentinel Prime both refused to hand in Optimus Prime. Megatron because he was a prideful bastard and didn't want to give him his prize. And Sentinel Prime mostly because out of loyalty. Because something you need to remember is that although you know Sentinel Prime did betray Optimus, he did it just so he could save their species. He had really no ill will against Optimus Prime or the other, but he didn't hate them. If anything, he just he wanted them to join him and Megatron, rebuild Cybertron together. So he just couldn't bring himself to kill Optimus, at least in this timeline. And also because he was defenseless. So Logdan then sweetened the deal by offering the two of them a proto matter seed in exchange for Optimus Prime. Sentinel was really tempted with this, with the seed that could really speed up the rebuilding of Cybertron. But just as Sentinel was about to accept Lockdown's deal, Optimus Prime used the opportunity to reignite Sentinel's sense of justice. After realizing the error of his ways and having a change of heart, Sentinel proceeded to pretend to hand over Optimus Prime. When the transaction was taking place, Sentinel ambushed and defeated Lockdown in a 1v1. And he also took control of Lockdown's ship. Hey, if Day Trader can do it, then so can Sentinel Prime. Also, um, yeah, Lockdown gets defeated by Sentinel Prime. So for all of the people out there who are saying Lockdown is on Sentinel Prime's level, yeah, I'm sorry to tell you this pretty much confirms that that's not the case. <laughs> um, so after killing most of Lockdown's crew and freeing the prisoners, Optimus Prime and Sentinel team up with the Dinobots in having control of Lockdown's ship they wage a long guerrilla campaign against Megatron and his Decepticons, gathering forces and allies from whatever pockets of Autobot and human resistance they can find. From this point, the timeline begins to shift. Optimus Prime and Sentinel eventually restore freedom to Earth and manage to restore Cybertron using the sea. I just want to point out, if it was that easy to restore Cybertron using the sea, why didn't Lockdown just offer the sea to Megatron in the first place? I mean... I'm sure Megatron will pay any price Lockdown wants to restore his homeworld. Hell, if reviving Cybertron and destroying the Earth is so important, why didn't the creators just send a seed towards Cybertron to, you know, revitalize it? It's... You know, we're just opening up a black hole of questions, and honestly, it's the movies, just go with it. But yeah, the Autobots and humans managed to retake back the Earth from the Decepticons. Supposedly, Lockdown spends the rest of his days capture inside the Night Telemos, and um... Megatron dies? Maybe? Question mark? You know how Megatron is, you kill him and he always comes back. It's never made clear what happened to the other Autobots like Ironhide, Bumblebee, Breakaway and all of the others. If this follows the, um, you know, Autobot and Decepticon campaign, then we can at least come to the conclusion that the Autobot deaths that happen in that game are probably canonical to the events of this timeline. All aside from Bumblebee, because I think he survives. As for everyone else, that they're fair game. But yeah, guys, that's it for this what if scenario. What if Megatron defeats the Fallen? Things gonna play out almost as well. I don't wanna say exactly the same. Very similar to Dark of the Moon, but you know, with some Age of Extinction thrown in there and way more deaths and stuff like that. However, I do like the idea of Optimus Prime and Sentinel Prime alongside the Dinobots, just you know blazing their way through the earth just trying to take it back from the Decepticons. I think it's a cool idea, that's a very cool image of what if scenario. Unfortunately, I don't have any images of this because this was all told to us by a text. So we don't have any visuals except from, you know, this stock footage I'm using right now on the screen. This is still a pretty cool what if scenario and there's plenty, plenty more what if scenarios regarding the movies. If you guys like this, then, you know, let me know because I got plenty. <laughs> <laughs> plenty of more what if scenarios here because there's like so many what if scenarios in regards to the movies and Transformers as a whole thanks to Ask Pacto Prime. This is just one of the many scenarios and I thought it would be very interesting for you guys to hear us. since I know Lockdown vs Sentinel Prime it's one of those very debated topics in the community especially for the movie goers and what if scenarios are always popular. Hey, I mean, just look at Dragon Ball What If scenarios. But yeah, guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully you'll enjoy. If you want more What If, you know, like, comment, subscribe. And if you guys want to support me in another way, consider becoming a channel member. Channel members get exclusive access to some of my videos, which I haven't made public yet. I have three ready that I'm just waiting to release. So if you guys want an early look of those before, you know, they get released, become a channel member or a patron. But yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Hopefully you'll enjoy. Like comment and subscribe and i will see you guys in the next video stay safe guys anyways guys before we go shout out to our amazing patreons xavier the god stitch productions scrub lordo allspark studios epic nin 
Lord Racer, and Transformers Gears and Brawn. That's quite a long name. And an even bigger shout out to our even bigger Patreons. Gerald the Great who donated $100 and x 23 who donated an amount of money. I'll leave you guys to figure out how much. Thank you guys for supporting me, it's much appreciated. And if you guys want to become a Patreon yourselves, all you gotta do is donate to my Patreon. By donating to my Patreon you get quite a few rewards. You get a free shout out to your YouTube channel and a link to it in the description down below. You can request your own videos, you get to see videos early, you can request some artwork too if you donate high enough, or you can call up with me in some of my videos or your videos, vice versa. <coughs> Scrub Lord. <coughs> Thank you guys for donating, it's much appreciated. Go check out their channels, link to that is gonna be in the description down below. And other social media in some cases. So you know, feel free to donate. But remember that this is entirely optional because freedom is the right of all sentient beings. Anyways, thank you guys for donating and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.